Hi friends, this is Shridhi Joshi and today I am going to talk about spine mobilization. Let's talk about the indication for spinal mobilization. If we want to go for pain relief uh, to decrease muscle guarding also and decrease muscle spasm and to treat reversible joint hypermobility uh, or of capsular origin we can give joint mobilization or we can give spine mobilization. Let's take contraindication because if we are going to learn the spinal mobilization we have to be careful for contraindication. Uh, contraindication may be absolute or relative. Let's take absolute contraindication. Patient may have malignancy, infectious arthritis, metabolic bone diseases like osteoporosis, neoplastic disease, fusion or ankylosis, osteomyelitis, fracture or ligamentous rupture and instability of spine are the absolute contraindication for spine mobilization because in malignancy we cannot give especially in osteoporosis and in ankylosis if we are giving mobilization patient may get fracture and if recent fracture is there and recent ligamentous rupture is there for that also we cannot give uh, spinal mobilization let's learn relative contraindication if patient is having excessive pain or swelling, arthroplasty, pregnancy, hypermobility, spondylolisthesis, rheumatoid arthritis, vertebrobasilary insufficiency, Down syndrome, recent whiplash injury or foraminal encouragement is there. For that we can also not uh, able to give spinal mobilization. Especially if we give invertebrobasilary insufficiency, um, patient may get drop attacks and uh, in Down syndrome also we cannot give because of uh, ligamentous laxity also. So these are the indication and contraindications for your spinal mobilization. Let's learn basic terminology because this will be helpful while uh, uh, learning the spine mobilization. For example, uh, if patient is having deviation of your spinous process or your transverse process, so you just cannot say that he has right or left deviation. You have to say patient have positional fault. Second is a moment fault. So for that, um, for example, L4 is not sliding forward or backward. So that called moment fault. Uh, for asymmetry, faulty spinous process or transverse process that moves posteriorly and for tissue abnormality patient complains that he may have local tenderness over transverse or spinous process or uh, that may be functional problem of large or small supporting musculature so if patient is there and he is complaining that he has local tenderness over uh, T3, T4 uh, transverse or spinous process and he has uh, some uh, muscular problem also so that called tissue abnormality. Let's learn Freddy's law. Harrison Flatty has developed some laws for uh, assessing the spine and mobilizing the spine. So first law that states that spine is in neutral position so spine is not in flexion or not in extension so that time your spine is bending to one side that cause horizontal rotation on opposite side this applied to uh, lumbar and thoracic spine especially occipito atlantal and uh, this is atlanto occipital uh, joint atlanto axial joint uh, this is occurring in the group of three or more segment with same motion loss. The second law states that your spine is in non-neutral position. For example, patient have flexion or extension restriction. So that time side bending to one side that is accompanied by a rotation to the same side and um, especially patient have a uh, uh, trauma and that may be sudden twist this is applied for c2 cervical spine to c3 and c7 vertebrae this is also applied for thoracic to lumbar spine also and in this only one segment is affected for law 3 if a motion in one plane is reduced so motion in other two planes are also reduced 
for example flexion is decreased so decrease in side bending and rotation will be there this is applied to entire vertebral column this law will be helpful while assessing and mobilizing the spine now we are going to see just the basics of your spine if we learn the spine on the spine model so that will be easier way to remember spinal mobilization so first of all we are just going to learn some basics of cervical thoracic and lumbar spine let's see this this is your skull so this is c0 this is c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 and c7 vertebrae as we all know that we have seven cervical 12 thoracic 5 lumbar 5 sacral and 4 occipital vertebra so let's see thoracic vertebrae this is t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 t6 t7 t8 t9 t10 t11 and t12 from here the lumbar vertebrae will start this is called l1 l2 l3 l4 and l5 if we see you can notice guys in the cervical c2 vertebrae we have bifid spinous process so two gaps are there this is called bifid spinous process same way here you in c5 also you can notice bifid spinous process the cervical spinous uh, c7 spinous process that is very prominent we use this for palpation and if you guys see able to see here let me rotate for you guys so if i rotate from c5 or c6 you can notice the gap here that is called your facet joints and uh, if you guys can able to see in thoracic that will be easier for you so this is your facet joint this is superior articular surface here there will be inferior articular surface so in order to learn the biomechanics of spine we have to be clear for superior articular facet and inferior this is your inferior articular facet so uh, let's see the transverse process and the spinous process of all the vertebrae if you guys can able to see uh, this is spinous process of cervical vertebrae this if you turn this side you can uh, notice that this will be your transverse process here is your transverse process here is your transverse process for thoracic that is very prominent the green color hand of the nail polish that is your transverse process this is your spinous process and for lumbar you guys can notice like let's move a bit so this one you can notice like this this is your spinous process for l3 and if I turn it a bit if I try to turn it this might be yeah this will be the transverse process like that is going up and you guys can easily notice this see this is your transverse process so this is about just the basic if this is this was the posterior view if I turn this side this will be the anterior view in that you can see the disc here these are the disc for this is for cervical this is for thoracic this is for thoracic and this one for the lumbar uh, these are the disc these are the now root exiting and a, a bit herniated disc here this is your pelvis and if we want to learn spinal mobilization so we have to take care for your spine specifically for the transverse process and for the spinous process where it is situated so this is just the basics see the nerve root so this yellow color are nerve roots and for cervical the nerve root exits above the corresponding vertebra 
for thoracic and lumbar spine this nerve roots here you can see that the nerve root exits below the corresponding vertebra okay thanks for watching and for future videos don't forget to subscribe if you have any doubts related to topics in physical therapy exams please let me know in my comment section so i can make a series of the videos on that till that time stay positive bye bye